today's episode, we're going to take a look at some IT myths that we all hear and have heard before. Often these myths we assume to be true, when in most cases they're not. So today, I have a list of 10 IT myths that we're going to get into and prove wrong. So stay tuned. Welcome to Debt Free and IT. I'm your host, Mike. This podcast is for anyone interested in IT. If you're trying to make a career change, you come to the right place. First off, I'd like to thank all my subscribers, everyone who subscribed this far. Hopefully, I have provided some value to you. As of now, we're up to over 100 subscribers. You know, the plan is to keep pushing. And then I plan on doing a special giveaway at my 500 subscriber mark. So stay tuned for that. Let's get to it. 10 IT myths that might be holding you back. So the first myth is, I've been hearing this for a long time. Um, I'm now an instructor. Sometimes I hear some of my female students may ask this question. The first myth is, is IT for men only? I'm sure you've heard that before. Is IT for men only? Being honest, I'm going to tell you this. Every job I've had in IT, I've had female coworkers. Uh, so there's females in IT. There's females in every IT department. Um, I've had female co-workers in help desk. I've had female co-workers in operations. I've had female co-workers in desktop. And then my last position when I was in the field, which was networking, I've had female co-workers in networking. And I'm going to tell you this, those female co-workers, they was good at what they did. So those, I learned a lot from them. Um, I still learn a lot from them whenever I talk to them. So that first myth, it's IT for men only. False. Females are also in IT. And a lot of times, to be honest, females do real good in IT. So that brings me to my second myth that might be holding you back. So is working in IT easy? That's a question I'm sure you probably heard before also, that most people say working in IT is easy. So let me break it down to you this way. Um, working in IT, first of all, is not easy. but one thing is what a lot of people misinterpret is sometimes working in IT, you might not be physically tired, meaning that you may not be doing no hard labor such as stacking boxes or moving things all day. You know, it's not no manual labor. So usually you may not be physically tired, but I'm going to tell you one thing for sure. Some days you will be mentally tired because IT it's a thinking game. So, you know, you have to think problem solving, troubleshooting, and maybe times where you're working on the issue and it could take hours to fix. So sometimes you will come home mentally drained. So IT is definitely not easy and it's not for the weak heart either. Moving on to the third IT myth is that you have to have a degree to work in IT. This is also false. So I have an associate's degree, but I have seen people, I have had coworkers to come into the IT field with no degree at all. They may have been studying towards a degree. They may have been saying, okay, I'm going to sign up for school and start working towards this. But once they came in from the start, their first start day, they did not have no kind of degree. So I've had coworkers to come in with no degree. Then I've also had coworkers come in with no degree, but they may have had a certification, and that's what got them the job because they did know a little bit about whatever uh, particular department they was in. So I've seen it both ways. I've seen it with a degree, without a degree, with no degree, and with a certification. So all of that is pretty common. So that third myth that you have to have a degree to work in IT, that is false. The fourth IT myth that we're going to prove wrong is that working in tech means that you know everything. So a lot of times if you're in the tech industry, I'm pretty sure you're the computer person for your family. Usually your family or relatives, they assume that anything technology wise, you know how to do it. So that's false. Me, my background is mainly networking. So if it's a coding issue or somebody's trying to code something, I'm totally lost. I don't know anything about coding. If it's something uh, to do with servers or building a server or something with virtualization, 
Um, I'm not well versed in the cloud. So a lot of those is out of my wheelhouse. So most people in IT, what they do is they just study their particular specialty. If the specialty. So if you're in networking, you're usually just proficient in networking. If you're in security, you're proficient in security. Then you do have those people that's proficient in everything, and they may have had a well-versed career to where they have saw everything. But if you're at a particular uh, environment or your place in employment where everything is sectioned off, where networking only does networking, security only does security, server only does server, you may not get a chance to have a lot of experience with those uh, technologies. And also, answering the question that if you're in tech, it means you know everything. Another thing that's known in the tech world is Google is our friend. So there's plenty of issues I've encountered where I'm lost just as much as the person who called me. And pretty much, I may resort to Google, to where I'm Googling that issue and usually with Google, you'll find where somebody's had the same issue. I know in networking, usually Cisco has a knowledge database where you search an issue in the Cisco knowledge database and it comes up where someone may have already had the issue to help you resolve it. So I don't know everything, but I for damn sure know how to Google everything. My fifth myth that we're going to prove wrong is that being in tech means that you know how to code, you know how to create programs, you can create mobile apps, you can create the next Facebook, you can create the next Netflix, you can create the next Tesla. That is absolutely wrong. As I stated earlier in one of the other myths, I don't know how to code. I'm lost with coding, you know, so I've been uh, learning up on some Python, but as far as saying I can code, that's a false statement, and that is a no. So everyone in tech doesn't know how to code. So if you're finding value in this episode, please leave me a review or a comment. And also, if you have a friend that needs to hear this, please share this episode with them. If you're listening via Apple Podcasts or Spotify or your favorite podcasting platform, please leave me a review and rate the show. It helps, us, it helps me out a lot. And plus, it helps me being able to try to make the con- content better for you. So if you have any questions or anything, please get those to me also. So the sixth tech myth is that tech jobs are unstable and there's no job security. This is also false because every computer company uses tech. Every kind of company out there, they use some kind of tech. So with every company using tech in some form or fashion, most of the time, all companies going to have a network. All companies going to need to protect that network. Majority of all companies, they're going to have some sort of server environment. So tech is everywhere. So with tech being everywhere, that means that you can leave one job today doing networking. Go find another job doing networking. So tech, I don't, I wouldn't say it's unstable. You often hear a lot of a lot of the big companies doing layoffs. But if you look back a couple of years, you'll see what a lot of those big companies do layoffs every year. It's kind of a uh, cyclical thing where, you know, most of the big companies, they're in the game to make money. So if they have a department that's not making money or they're losing money on, they may shut down that department. And which in that case, that means that the people in that department may be potentially laid off. Or either the people in that department may be able to move to another department. So I wouldn't say that tech is unstable. And I wouldn't say that there's no job security in tech. Just because of how much your skills can transfer, whether you're in a hospital environment or if you're working at a computer company, it doesn't matter. The, 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 te- the technology skills still remain the same. The seventh tech myth that I want to prove wrong, well, I'm going to prove wrong, is that all tech jobs are remote. That is absolutely false. So with the, in the beginning of COVID, a lot of jobs started going remote then, the ones that could be remote. But even during COVID, you have some people who were still coming into their office. So something like a, um, I pick on networking a lot because that's my background. So something like a network technician, you may not be 100% remote because the engineers and usually the higher level networking uh, teams, team, team members, they may have more days remote than you. You may not have no, no remote days because 
usually with these companies, they're going to need eyes and ears, boots on the ground. So if everyone's remote and a device happened to go down, which in networking, you have switches and routers that go down. I ain't going to say all the time, but it's not nothing that's, uh, that's not expected. So if something goes down or if a port needs to be connected and the desktop team can't do it, then someone down networking needs to be on premise in order to resolve those issues. So all jobs ain't remote. Um, there are a lot of jobs, like I said, with COVID, a lot of jobs have started becoming remote, but all jobs is not remote. I wouldn't, um, if I was just getting into tech, I wouldn't base my criteria on I'm only looking for jobs that's 100% remote because you may be cutting yourself short because there could be a good job that will get you that good experience that may not be 100% remote or it may not be remote at all. So that myth is also wrong. The eighth tech myth that I want to prove wrong is that most people think that you have to be real young to work in tech. So by real young, I'm just going to say 30 and under, or preferably probably 25 and under. So that is absolutely wrong also. So me, I didn't get started in tech till I was probably around 26, I think. Uh, then also, plenty of my coworkers were either my age or older. And then also, I remember when I got laid off at my job, which I ended up going to school after that for tech. I remember being laid off, and the same time that I was in school studying for tech, tech uh, my the the my old employment or my old employers, um, the company that was our main boss at that company, he was also going to school for programming. He ended up graduating, and he also ended up getting a job. And I want to say he was probably in his high fifties. So there's no age limit in tech, long as you can understand the technologies. And long as you make yourself valuable, there's no age limit. So the ninth tech myth that I want to prove wrong is that it costs a lot of money to learn tech. So some people think that if you spend a lot of money on something, that means that you're going to learn it or you're going to learn it better than this other person. You know, similar to the people that say, OK, if I go get this high priced computer, that's going to help me learn tech. It's not that's. Totally not the, not the case. No matter what PC you got, no matter how much you spend, if you're not able to learn the if you're not able to learn the um, the material, then you're just not able to learn the material. So, also, it doesn't cost a lot because depending on the type of person you are, if you're a self learner, you can go to, to these websites like a Udemy, pay ten dollars for a networking course, or you can go to YouTube and find a networking course online for free. And also you can find a cybersecurity course online for free. And then also you can find the resources to do your labs for free. So it doesn't cost a lot to learn tech, but what it does cost is your consistency and being able to steady work at it, knowing that you may not get the end result for a year or two. So it's nothing that's gonna happen fast. You're not gonna jump in it today do this magical course for two weeks and then hop out of that course and you're making six figures. It's not going to happen that fast. The last and the 10th myth I want to prove wrong is that tech is born. So tech is not born at all. Tech is one of the few fields to where your job is different every day. Every day you're going to encounter a different issue. Every day you're going to encounter a different problem. There's going to be times when things break that haven't broken in 10 years and you're like, oh, what's this? And then you have to go back and figure out how to fix whatever's broken. So you're going to learn something new every day in tech. You're always learning. Tech is always changing. So what's in today may be out tomorrow. So you're always learning. It's always something different. So that's one field that never gets born. Now you may have some days where you may not have much going on and that day may be born, but tech overall never gets born. So that brings me to the end of this episode. I hope you have enjoyed this topic. 
Uh, and I hope that you, I went over a couple myths that you might have thought was true. And now that you know they're wrong, that may be the myth that was holding you back from getting into the IT industry or to go ahead and start your studying plan to ever study to become that cybersecurity engineer, that network engineer, or that systems engineer, or that applications engineer, or that uh, coding programmer. So hopefully one of these myths that I proved wrong helped you out to go ahead and take that first step and work towards getting in the IT industry. So like I said, that brings us to the end of the episode. Don't forget to follow me on IG and TikTok at Debt Free and IT. If you have any questions or comments, you can email them to me at debtfreeNIT at gmail.com. Other than that, I'll see you next week. Peace.